Hey, welcome back to the Build It Basement. Today is part two of our wiring of our Vorin 0.1. We're going to kind of finish that up today and then we will be finalizing everything with the skirts in the next video. So if you like this video, go ahead and hit that like button, hit subscribe, and here we go. So where we left off, we uh, installed our mains outlet. We did all that. So if you haven't seen that, go check out my previous video or check out my channel for tons of Voron content. Uh, moving on, we're doing our mains wiring in between our inlet and to our 24 volt power supply. Uh, quickly on this picture, we th we see three different colors. We three, three see different colors, huh? Uh, I'll get those words in the right order. Uh, we have this yellow green wire, a blue wire, and a brown wire. And we have this lettering to go along with it. Uh, L for line, N for neutral, and PE for our ground. Uh, we also have a V minus and a V plus, which are double screwed, and those are outputs on that unit. So let's jump right over to the printer here after reading this real quick. This completes mains wiring on a Voron 0.1. A guard cover will be installed in a later step. Secure the wires with cable clips, cable tie anchors. The bed heater will be powered, is powered by DC voltage ground, and the print bed should not be required. Observe local regulations in regards to grounding the frame and other components. 100% agree with that. So basically what they're telling us here is everything beyond that mains power supply um, coming into the printer going into that 24 power, volt power supply is DC. Um, DC normally does not need to have an earth ground like AC does. Uh, people argue whether or not AC is more or less uh, deadly than DC, but trust me with enough voltage and enough amperes you can kill anybody with any amount of voltage well, with the correct amount of voltage and amperes. Um, so, um, I do agree that AC is probably more dangerous though. So, jump right in it. Let's get into that wiring and we are actually working on the bottom, top, back, and bottom. So, let's see. I can't, can I flip this all the way? Yeah, I can't flip this all the way over, but what we can do, you know what? Let's figure out how to flip it all the way over. Let's put something underneath it because it's going to make it a hell of a lot easier to do. So let's kind of do that. How's that? That works for me. Works for you too, right? All right. So uh, on the LDO kit, they already gave us this pre-wired um, with these uh, spade terminals um, pre-crimped on here. No heat shrink or anything like that, but I think we'll be okay. Uh, I don't see any struggling wires coming out of this, any stragglers or anything like that. Uh, and here we have our green and yellow our blue uh, and our L, and these are all labeled with an L, N, and a G, N, D, um, which stand for an L for line, N for neutral, and G, N, D for ground. All right, so I'm actually going to see if I can see this here. We also have those same things. I don't know if that comes in close on the printer. Um, yeah, right here. So you can see here we have our L, we have our N, and we have this funky looking symbol um which is hard to see let's grab this real quick there's always a camera yep so we have this funky little symbol right here if you're not familiar that is a ground uh it's a line with a bar and then some small lines after that pointing downwards into the ground um and then again over here we have our voltage minus and our voltage plus in dc you have a negative and a positive if you hook them up backwards it will be a negative voltage uh, you don't want to do that unless you have that. There are some things that require negative voltage, so um, fun there. Uh, over here, you have an LED, an indicator that everything's powered on. And then finally, right here, you have an adjustment screw to adjust the voltage coming out of this. That's one of the things we'll do once we get this wired up. Actually, the first thing we do, uh, I think it's a quick little step that we can do while we're installing everything here. And I think a lot of people don't do that. And I'm sure at some point, I'm going to catch somebody off guard and they're going to fry something because this will be running at 26 or 28 or or something like that, or, or maybe too little of a voltage and it won't be working right. So let's go ahead and get that wired and grab a multimeter while we're at it. Set this guy aside and we're going to need a Phillips screwdriver. Yeah, that should do. We're going to use our Jake me or Jake my. So I've decided how that goes, but and Jake is not strong enough. Nope, Jake cannot do it. Those are pretty beefy, I guess, in terms of um, 
screws. So let me get the beefier screwdriver out, the a Dremel. Amazon link below. All right, so we can put that in reverse, and this thing's cool because when you push on it, it works. So we'll go ahead and hit that, and we're just gonna loosen up these three screws. We do not need to take them all the way out. It's easy to put them back in, but it's easier if you don't take them out. Uh, on these terminals, just real quick here, another thing just to make a mention of. Um, there is one side that is kind of flat-ish and one side that kind of has a high on it. Flattish to the bottom on these. Just FYI, it's minor. You can actually put them in both ways. It won't make that much of a difference. But if you have a uh, preference when doing it, you're better off putting the flat side down. Everything won't burn up if you do it the other way, but flat side down is the proper way. And then one other thing we're going to do once we get these hooked in. And another thing here too, we have to stand up a little bit. Let me just go ahead and do that. Is you're going to make sure that these don't go under the screw. They want to go under the, there's like a, a clipped, um, it's not really a washer, but it's a metal piece that is kind of attached to the screw. Uh, and these are going to go between that and the metal plating on the bottom. And this is a little snag bit long here. I'm going um, to just make myself a little coil right here. It's a little coil. We come back to that once we um, get to a point where we want to tie that up a little bit, I guess. All right. Let's just get this together. One, two, and three. Like that. <clears throat> and then let's tighten these up. There we go. Again, we'll slide that away at some point here. I'm going to try to keep these a little straight coming out like that. And now if we put power in here, we should have um, power going directly in here. Now at this point, all this is mains power, meaning that's full voltage out of the wall socket. So be very careful around this. Stand by. All right, let's grab this. that the lovely back of my head there and all right power switch is on this little LED right here is on if I turn this off it's gonna take a couple seconds but basically the capacitors in here are gonna drain out and the LED is going to go off Stand by, it should get dimmer and dimmer and dimmer and dimmer. There it goes, getting a little dimmer. We could drain that off by hooking something up to these voltage leads, but we'll leave it like that for a second. And we'll get the meter ready. We're in DC voltage. The LED's pretty much out at this point. And if I hook this up like that, we go plus and minus yep, right, zero volts all right so let's look this back up again and let's look up our positive and our negative let's see where we're at oh we're in ac what are we in ac dc there we go Twenty four point two one, which is probably fine, but just to show, go ahead and tweak that down just a little bit. 
in a uh, previous video if you want to go check something out on my Voron 2.4 video this is where I made lots of sparks fly because I was not careful enough that's too big of a screwdriver here we go I'm gonna turn this down so I make sure you can see that it's kind of a little bit of a so right there we're at 23.25 the screw is very sensitive 22 23.3 23.5 5 6 23 7 23 8 24 on the money bada boom bada bang oh yeah 24 on the money there you go now again that's the stuff you probably don't need to take if you don't want to um it is good to know it's a good troubleshooting step if you think you might have a bad power supply um so it's good to know what you're working with um uh, 24 volt power supply now on your mains lead you see 120 ac on this meter i'm going to turn that off i'm going to wash this current drain out or this see drain out 24 you're going to see that go down slowly actually get to see it because i'm in front of it put that right there yeah what's up 24 23 that's draining out you can see it slowly is going to go down to zero like i said it's just basically the passers draining out over time if you did have um something hooked up that was draining power out of this it would happen a lot quicker but this is basically just floating so the meter doesn't really take much energy to pull off of it I always did wonder though why they don't make multimeters that charge and you test circuits with them. And you plug it into an AC outlet with the leads just for like 30 seconds and charge up with like a super capacitor. Come on. All right, good enough. <clears throat> so that is that. I go ahead and unplug this power plug. We do not need that right now, and we're safer without it. Especially me. All right, back up to the screen. So now we're gonna do our five volts. So we're going, well, our five volts and we're also gonna do our control board. But um, first things first on our five volts, we're gonna basically hook up our 24 to five volt um, converter, call it a buck converter, you can call it a DC, DC converter, you can, call it a bunch of different things but basically it's going to convert 24 volts down to 5 volts um, and also came the kit does up to 10 amps on the one that came with this and basically we're going to be taking one of the two screws and going to here and then the other of the two screws are going to go to the control board so let's do that all right so again with this kit they provide us a cord right here right here right here uh that will do the uh raspberry pi so eventually it's gonna come out of the five volt side of that but for now we right now need this right here it's already pre-labeled um this one says uh let's see can we see it yeah two five volt power supply and 24 volt in make sure you don't get it backwards you can put this whichever direction you like but don't put it in backwards. All right, so 24 volt in. We gotta make sure we get the right side in. Okay, and you gotta make sure you use the right terminal screws too. Use the proper 24 volt terminal screws because you do have two sets. And hopefully you don't screw them with you. All right, so we're going to loosen these guys up. Again, you don't need to take the screws out. You just need to make room. And we do need to make sure that our red goes to positive and our black goes to negative. Basic stuff there. So I'm gonna start with uh, I'm gonna start with my negative here and my positive over here. So I'm going to the first of each type. Oops. 
mix that up a little bit. I don't need that much power. There we go. All right, that's that. Then we also have our other wire, which this one is a little different. On this one, we have the spade terminals. Then we have these guys over here. I don't know what these are called. Give me one second. I have a bunch of them, so. It's called. They're called terminal assortments. No. Um, these things are pretty cool if you've never used them before. Um, these come in a whole. Let's see. They come from Extra Biggie. Extra Biggie. Oop, where are we? Right here. Extra big to super tiny. And these are handy, especially when you're working with small things and big things, because they keep you from having uh, little wire hairs poking around when you don't need them. Uh, and they hold those wires together and they make it so you get a better, more solid connection. So let's do this. 24 volt in to SKR. All right, so this wire only works with an SKR. All right, uh, let's see here. My humor dry enough tonight? Uh, let's see here, let's get this. Boom. Boom, so there we go. So black, black, red, red. This one is to the five volt. This one will go to the control board here at some point. We neatening that up. I'm going to twist this a little bit. I have it riding on a couple of boxes for me. Uh, and we're gonna grab this 24 volt in. Just gonna lap it through here. And then we're going to take our 20, 12, 24 volt on this side. So do be mindful of that. Okay, you gotta be over here. All right, so this unit does have an in and an out. You definitely want to hook up your 12 slash 24 volts on one side and do hook up your positive five and negative to negative. And then this is kind of an odd thing on this unit. Um, your negatives are, are basically they're kind of common on this. So they are both on the inside, but your positives are on the outside. So it's not red, black, red, black. It's red, black, black, red. Just a side note. Side note. All right. So let's get this going. So get that open. Again, same thing applies here. We don't need to take these screws all the way out. We just need them loosened. And let's see, positive to here and negative to here. Tighten those down. Oh, wrong way. Down. And as I'm tightening these down, I'm just applying a little bit of pressure on the on pushing them in as I go. Just make sure they don't slide out. There we go. And then uh, let's see here. What are they showing here on the screen? Yeah. Uh, cable cross section cables to the control board should be one millimeter, 18 American wire gauge, AWG or larger AWG 18. I don't know why it's American wire gauge 18 instead of 18 American wire gauge, whatever, uh, or larger. That's just me being stupid. Um, happens all the time. 0.5 millimeter American wire gauge 20 is sufficient for the connection to the Raspberry Pi. What are they doing here? See what they gave us. So it looks like they actually did that. Um, now, uh, something to be mindful of that is if you are self-sourcing and you're buying wire, um, you don't need to buy 15,000 different types of wire. You can always settle for the larger wire as long as it doesn't cause you any issues when you're doing wiring and you have plenty of room for them. Uh, never use a smaller wire. Always use the next larger wire. So... Right here, if you need some 20 and some 18 and you didn't have any wire, you didn't have any hookup wire or anything like that that were in those gauges, uh, my suggestion is you go out and buy the 18 gauge wire um, and not buy the 20 gauge wire if you didn't have to. Uh, but do not buy the 20 gauge wire and use it for the 18 gauge hookups. You might get away with it. You might not. 
All right, so according to this, we are going to hook up our secondary part here. Let's see, it'll show us that, but um, this is where our lead right here is gonna hook up to the Raspberry Pi. So I'm gonna get that done too. So I don't really show it yet, but I'll assume they imply it by having the little red and black wire coming off of it. And you can note on theirs too, they have the red, black, black, red. So. Everybody's telling you. The manual's telling you. I'm telling you. There's another video someplace that somebody else made that's telling you. Or you might find another video out there somebody else made that is only about six minutes long and they just kind of skip over everything and you get like poof wiring done just like poof printers done in a half hour so if for nothing else hopefully if you are watching my video and you've watched other videos in my series of videos it's helpful there's nothing worse than a bunch of videos when somebody says that they went ahead and got the wiring done and this is what they did. All right, so tighten that up, up that. All right, so there we go. Now on the end here, there is a USB connector. You could also utilize uh, the, uh, the the header pins on the Raspberry Pi to power it, uh, but this will work just nice and it's nice clean connection. So what you gonna say? All right, back up to the screen real quick. We'll call that good and so now they want us to do our bed stuff and our 24 volts from the power supply to the actual board. And I'm trying to do a balancing act with the printer while I say this. So, um, er Actually, do I? I don't need it on anything right now. Be good. Just when it's on its head, it's actually on the print head. So I didn't want to do that. Well, I'm going to leave stuff here because there's a better chance not that we'll have to flip it back on its head again. Uh, all right. So 24 volts to the power supply. And our 24 volts from the power supply is right here. Where's this thing? Oh, that's our. Yeah. Okay. It's, we're going to need you guys in a minute. You guys settle down over there. All right, so we got a black and red here again. Again, these are our larger gauge and this little shrink tubing here specifically says 24 volts in to our SKR. Um, so these guys are basically going to be going in right here, um, which interesting enough, I don't really see any labeling on this, but um, I have no reason to second guess it. Famous last words, right? I'm guessing I probably could. Is there one in here? Oh, I probably could just grab a diagram of that board and confirm that, which I probably will before I actually power anything up. But these Voron guys are this smart, pretty smart. There we go. Got those in. Whoop, but we didn't. Yeah, loosen those right up. All right, they weren't as loose as I thought they were. All right, that should work. Yep, there we go. So on these terminals right here, when you loosen them up, they actually are kind of spring loaded and that spring goes down. You want to loosen up really well. Um, you can get these screws to come out, but they don't come out very easily. So loosening them up too much really isn't an issue. Um, so do loosen them up pretty well, then set your parts in there. And you see those connectors now, they're pretty safe and sound. There's no chances of little wires dangling out uh, as long as those are put on there properly and they look pretty decent to me. So now they want us to do our print bed. Um, again, 18 gauge wire or larger. Let's see here. We have, is our print bed wiring here? Is that it? 
Yeah, that's it. All right, so we have our print bed and our thermistor, um, which are represented in El Picturante right here with the red and black for the heat to the bed and uh, the green wires here for the thermistor. I don't believe, let me think about that for a second. Now, there's really no reason to really be concerned about red and black on this. Your thermo, uh, your print bed heater will work either way. Uh, the only positive thing about having your positive and negative properly set up is for your fusing. Uh, again, that's something you can argue that doesn't really matter with a uh, you know DC powered bed. Um, that even if it runs out of control, it's not going to run that far out of control. But you might as well have it properly just for safety's sake and for keeping things clean and neat, you know, for next time we build a printer that uses mains for your heat bed. Um, and your thermistor, same thing. It's just a resistive load that changes based on uh, the temperature. That's why it's a thermistor, kind of like a resistor, only thermally um, changing. So uh, both these wires can basically go in wherever, uh, without any chances of getting the polar a polarity incorrect, but We'll do it the way that the manual is showing here, just for for sake of doing it properly. All right, so we'll get this up and over. I'm not exactly sure how it's going to route in the end. And the one with the wire, uh, with the heat shrink on it is going to be the positive. Now they didn't use red or black, so I'm just assuming here. And again, it's not that big of a deal, but. in when I insert these I'm actually staying towards the top of the hole uh, one. Like that and I'm actually gonna do this one first these wires are a little unruly these wires are actually um, they kind of fire they will they have some fiberglass and some silicone in them that's what makes them temperature resistant. Um, but they are thicker and they are a little bit less friendly to bend. Mean wires, very mean. All right. And then, oh, we got a crimp connection on this. All right, so not a big issue there. I need a probably work so basically what we have is a little JST style connector on here um, and I assume this is one that they want me to use it's also came in the kit uh, they probably didn't put this connector on the thermistor for one simple reason and that's so you can get through the chain um, that was already oh, if that was already on the chain that'd be difficult so that's gonna go in right there it's a two pin and these right here are going to go in like so. So there's a, I don't even know if I can show that. I don't know if I have the definition. I need the 8K. Let me see if I can get in tight enough on this. All right, so that'll work. There's a little tiny, come on, do it. There's a little tiny clip on the top of it that kicks up, kind of like a, uh, I don't know, a, you know, just a little bent up piece of wire there. So that's actually going to go on this side of this connector. It's actually going to come up through here. That's actually what's going to lock it in place. So basically, this is going to go in. You're going to push it in. And it's going to make a click. I don't know if you can hear it or not, but... and there you go so that's locked in place using that little thing now if you had to release that um there are tools to do this but use an exacto knife it'll work you can just basically push down on that little pin and you watch i'm not gonna be able to get it out just because i'm saying this but you should be able to pull that back out if you 
you do this just right. Like I'm put too much in this. We're just gonna get bored and fast forward and tell me the video is terrible. Tell me they already knew everything. But anyways, you can push that down and pull that pin back out. That's why it has that little leg on it that clips up. Um, if you ever have to, if you have a broken wire or something, if you have some type of weird need to reuse one of these. So there you go. Those two are in there. Nice and tight. Give them a little tug. They work. All right. And this guy right here, uh, this connector has a little locking uh, and it faces towards the back. It's only really going to go in. You could probably force it in the other way, but it wouldn't be fun. So we got that like that for now. And then motors. All right. We got a bunch of motors to hook up and our end stops. Let's do the end stops first. So here they're calling out wire gauge on the end stop. Um, and this is very, very thin wire. The reason for that is these are really not carrying any type of voltage uh, or any type of current. Um, these are just switches. These are just telling the control board if something is on or off. These switches are normally um, closed. So that helps with failure. And if they see them open, then they're triggered. It's backwards, but trust me on this, it's the best way to do it. It's most of the ways that most 3D printers are made to help protect the printer uh, and the motors. So we need our Y and our Z end stop first. Um, so let's see where we are at. Let me grab that. And let's go, I'm gonna bring this back up here real quick. Going backwards, going backwards. I just wanna review something real quick. Oh, I'm getting dizzy. Man, we've done a lot here. All right, here we go. All right. So, these are our end stops right here. This would be our Z end stop. This is the one that is the up down. Use it. Use for you folks that don't know. Up and down is your Z. And then um, right here we have our X end stop. So that's your side to side motion. And then you have your Y, which is your front to back motion. So I just want to go over that real quick because we're going to be grabbing those wires and it'll help alleviate some questions. Hopefully. All right. So first things first, we have our Y, which is coming off of here. That's our front to back again. Um, so our Y end stop is going to, let's see these. Yep. These are labeled. So I'll double check this once we get them hooked up, but our Y end stop, there is a label here for a Y end stop. And a lot of times these boards are labeled and for the most part they tend to be correct for what we're doing um let's see if i just change the angle just a little bit more seriously come on man My hairy knuckles that's about it all right you can kind of make that out um so we have our y stop right here and that's going to plug in to our y end stop like that and then and these are labeled to end stop y and then we have our z end stop which does not have a connector on it yet so we'll get one on that in a minute uh, but while we wait for that, we'll get our X end stop installed. Like that. And let me find another. Let's see what I did. I was put up here. Where did I put that? 
that. Well, I see if I misplaced that two pin. So let me find another two pin real quick. Uh, let's see here. Let's see. Three pin, two pin. So, spare parts, good to have. Buy them by the dozen. Amazon, AliExpress. If you don't, if you want to buy these and don't have my link, follow the link I have, then buy them. It will literally give me 35 cents. Plus or minus 35 cents. So, oh, let's see here. We'll put this together. And again, polarity doesn't matter on these either they're indifferent uh, let's see here that one and that one all right and then there we'll slide this up here so it has its little label nice and cute like that and we'll move this guy out of the way and we'll get back oh back to there let's oh where are we right here wow that was pretty good <laughs> yeah i couldn't do that again all right so a motor b motor z motor so a and b motors and I gotta make sure I get the right ones for the right ones. That's gonna throw me off on the A and B. Uh, the Z is easy. We are winding up a little bit of mess here, and it's probably some of this is gonna get disconnected and then reconnected once we figure out some wire management. Make sure it's coming up. Uh, let's see here. That. While I'm waiting to do that, I'm, I am gonna hook this up real quick. There's no need not to. This is our Raspberry Pi power. USB and this could probably get tucked right underneath like so ish yeah that works and let's see here our Z motor is getting hooked in on let's see here A B Z so that is Z right here Right there is our Z. And leave that like that. And then I always forget. I think this is A and this is B. Oh, there's a little diagram right there. All right. So right about here, they're, they're giving you a back view showing you A and B. A is on the right-hand side if the printer is facing towards you printing. And then if you're looking from the back side, A is on the left. So on my setup right now, as I'm looking at, this is A, this is B. So A motor is going to the top, run underneath everything here. So A right here, the top. One thing you might have to deal with if you are self-sourcing again is that your uh, wiring to your steppers is proper. Um, <clears throat> one thing you might notice, and it's probably part of the um, setup and configuration when we do Clipper is that you're you might have motors that are going backwards um so basically what can happen is your wires are inverted um on your stepper cause them to go backwards and you can either fix that with wiring but you can also fix that in your actual clipper configuration so don't fret if you'd rather work with it in software do that if you'd rather work with it in hardware you can pull those pins out swap them around uh, it's just as easy 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 either way probably good to know how to do it in both ways uh, personally, I think it's probably a little bit easier doing software, but do know that if it's moving in the opposite direction you have, that's probably your problem. All right, so let's do this one. This is our B motor now, and B is going to the second connector. Right here, these are four pin. There we go. So A, B, Z because who has time for the whole damn alphabet? All right, 
So Raspberry Pi, we got hooked up. We just did that right here. I tucked, um, I took the power wire out from that and kind of gave it a little tuck underneath. Pretty simple. Yeah. Yeah, I like this one. Uh, let's see here. Where does that leave us? Okay, hot end and cooling. All right, so hot end and cooling. So probably arguably some of the most important connections are your hot end and cooling fan uh, and your thermistor and your part cooler. So there's a lot going on in that, uh, in that tool head of yours. Uh, there's almost as many connections coming out of that as there are in the whole rest of the printer. So that being said, let's jump into that real quick. All right, so our hot end stuff. Now, I know that this printer uses uh, what people call an umbilical cord. Um, so I'm not sure, and I'm probably going to have to pull a lot of wiring out. That umbilical cord normally goes... I'm thinking it goes in between the belts in the frame, but I guess it could go on the other side, but I'm guessing it goes in between because there's room. At least it seems like there's room. All right, so we have our extruder motor right here, uh, which they're referring to as the E-motor in the instructions. Look at it real quick, E-motor. That's going to go to the position that is lowest on the board. So if we flip this back over again... This is going to go on this EM. It looks up here. Yeah. So it's going to go on this EM connector or extruder motor. Uh, and at this point, I guess I'll note what this not use connection point is. So this board actually is capable of driving um, two Z motors off of this board but they are tied together. So you're basically just tying your two connectors together and it's running off of one stepper driver, but they provide another connector on here. So if you had like a double Z uh, situation, you could do that on here, uh, but you wouldn't have any uh, abilities to adjust those. They'd be together, they're tied together, they're bonded together. They, um, they're uh, pretty simple. All right, so then we have our hot end, we have our thermistor and some fans. Uh, did they give us extensions? Give us extensions. I don't know what they gave us. What is this? All right, they gave us. This is part fan, and this is hot end. What? Hot end fan. Why did you do that? That's odd, huh? So the hot end is connecting to these points right here because the amount of power it takes. The hot end cooling fan. Okay, it's getting ground from here, but power from here. And I'm guessing that's because of the five volts that it requires. It's a little different. All right, so let's get that done. So let's bring that around. Odd. It just seems odd. It's not odd, but it just seems odd. On his face. And so this guy is going to go right here, which is in pin two of that. And then this one, we're going to have to unravel this a little bit. Uh, pull that back out. Try to get some of this, pull this back a little bit here so we get enough distance out of this. Those two connection points are kind of far apart. So, okay, so here for that, and then over here for this one. So, we're getting our negative out of this guy over here. Right there. 
and our positive over here on that. And that's for our hot end fan, as noted right here. All right, good enough. And let's see here now we have our part cooling fan. So part cooling fan is going to go up to here. So basically that is the connection point nearest to where the, um, the actual hot ends plug into. Um, actually these connectors real quick. So your steppers are all over here. These are your four point connectors. Uh, and then these are miscellaneous, your end stops, uh, thermistors, things like that. Uh, on these over here, uh, you have additional connectors over here for uh, probes, things like that. This, is cool. this would be for a display if you had one or you wanted to add one. Um, you got an SD card here, you got a USB here. Um, you have some jumpers in here. You have your higher voltage, your 24 volt. Um, I believe it's only 24 volt. This one might be some 12 volt stuff, but I believe it's only 24 volt. So you have your 24 volt in your bed and then your hot end. Uh, you have a 20 amp fuse right here, and I'm not quite sure what that guy is for. Um, it could be used as an enclosure heater, possibly. I don't know. Uh, I'd have to pull the manual to take a look at that one, but it's kind of a quick rundown of what you have there. So now we need our, let's see, thermistor and our hot end. So we might be running into a little issue on that. Not a big one, but a little one. So I'm probably going to have to make my connection up on that. Reason being is I did not use the... Um, actually, hold on. Hold the phone. Nice. All right, so it looks like the... E3D Revo Voron kit came with came with um, extensions, which I didn't think it did, but it does. Which is nice, or else we would have had to do some crimping, and crimping ain't easy. All right, so we have our hot end, and I can tell that because of the connectors on there. So. Um, the hot ends are going to use, like I said, for the higher voltages, are going to use these guys. And then you have your, like, a JST style connector here for your thermistor, um, which basically has a male and a female on there. So uh, let's see if we can get that going. Uh, so, one thing to note on this is it would be nice, and I'm probably wrong, but I like to do this myself. Is whenever I get two connectors that come off of something um, and you know it's kind of hard to remember what they are on this one particular I can tell that this is the hot end because it says 24 volt 40 watts on it and there's no thermistor that requires 40 watts um, but I like to use a male and a female end so you can't get them swapped out so basically you can make one a male say that one a male and make this one a female um, and that way when you go to plug them in there's no wiring them in backwards this isn't set up that way and it's not a big deal it's just a little side note for me I'm just a pain in the butt all right this is a hugely long wire so we'll have to deal with that in the not so distant future and we got the other side of this for our button thermistor and we'll do this and while i'm doing this hey if you like the video please do hit that like button um if you haven't subscribed yet i would appreciate it I'm still working on trying to get some subscribers out there um kind of stalled out it might be a time of year it might be people aren't so interested in the voron zero but i'm not just building voron zeros i got a 2.4 i built i plan on probably building a couple more vorons maybe a rat rig i don't know for sure um, but do leave me a comment down below too. Let me know if you want me to do a video on the cleaning up of the wiring or if you just don't care about it. You just want to see the wiring, you want to see the electronics, you want to see the thing print. Um, good to do it either way. Uh, I will be doing a whole series of videos on the co configuration of the software. 
and eventually I'll be doing a video on swapping out this controller board uh, with the other controller board, the uh, the Pico uh, from Big Tree Tech. But I just wanted to do what was in the kit for now. It came with the LDO kit. Gonna do it the way it was. We'll swap that out. It's not gonna be that big of a difference. Plus, you get to watch me set Clipper twice. All right, so these guys, where are these going? This is a hot end, so obviously uh, the hot end. I'm gonna I'm gonna work these all as far deep underneath everything as possible because that sounds like the fun thing to do. And again, these are not polarity sensitive. It's just a heater. A heater is just resistive. Basically, it's taking the electricity coming through it and stopping it from getting back to where it's going. And that causes heat. It's a resistive heat. Come on. Okay. All right. That's that one. A little wonky hold on here there we go all right and then let's get the second one in go and then finally our thermistor for our hot end you're gonna go down here and it's actually not the right connector here but I think it will work. I think the spacing is workable. Um, I'm going to use that for now, but I'm going to switch that out. There's no sense in crimping a new wire right now and watch you, or have you guys watch me do that. But uh, we should do that. All right, so now they're showing us kind of the strain relief up here on that. And what is this? Electronics wiring, hot end bed. It's this is an overview. So if you're gonna print something off and have in front of you, if you didn't have a screen in front of you, this would be what you print off. Um, and let's see here, controller board. This is just another. Um, see, schematic assumes a 24 volt cooling fans and a 5 volt for the hot end. If you source different fans, there you go. Um, and you can work that out based on the board. You, I mean, you could have sourced a different board too. So that's all up for conversation, I guess. Um, and then right here. Okay. So right here, while we just uh, that you power your Raspberry Pi via the GPIO pins, you may also use it, uh, power in USB port, uh, kind of suitable USB cable wire, the plus minus. So that's what we did. We used this port right here to power our Raspberry Pi. Uh, as I said earlier, you can power a Raspberry Pi off of the GPIO pins right there. They actually suggest here, I think LDO for ease of wiring uh, included this option down here, which I don't have a problem with. Uh, let's see here. And they want us to put our finger guard on the power supply, which I'll have to go find and I don't think you need to watch. And that's where we're at. So, once again, thank you for visiting. Thank you for watching. And if you've made it through this very end of this video, thanks a ton. Hit a like. Hit subscribe. Tell a friend. Tell a friend to tell a friend. And if you like corny dad jokes, let me know in a comment down below. Um, going to end this one out. And again, one last time, thank you. And I will see you next time.